servants look to the hand of their masters as the eyes of a maid to the hand of her mistress. Go ahead. Until he has mercy on us. Amen, somebody. So our eyes look to the Lord until he has mercy on us. Which is to say there's coming a moment where God will have mercy on you in your life. Anybody looking forward to that? I'm so thankful that God doesn't give me what I deserve. But he gives me mercy in terms of his grace being applied to my life. Bible says brand new mercies I see morning after morning after morning. Anybody thankful about that? Amen, somebody? Amen, amen. I'm ready for the word this morning. How about y'all? About to get into the word of the Lord on today that God will speak to us clearly in his word. Somebody say, I am delivered. I am delivered. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know about y'all, but I want to be delivered in the times that we are in so that the Lord will keep on having his way in our lives. Amen, somebody? Thank you for those of you who are just tuning haven't shared this yet, shared this this morning. I'm Dr. Ray Johnson, senior pastor here at Dominion Outreach Worship Center. We've been walking through this series on the focus to follow Jesus. Last week, as we were virtual, we started out in the story about Lazarus. Anybody want some things to be resurrected in your life? Amen. Somebody, somebody say, I am delivered. I am delivered. Yeah, yeah. I want God to resurrect some things. I want him to resurrect dreams and promises and visions and ideas. And I want God to begin to move in my life according to his design and according to his will. We're going to pick up where we were from last week in the story of Lazarus. We're going to really pick that back up this morning. And we're going to go right back in, starting at verse 17. And we're going to ride all the way through. Now, it's quite a little bit of reading. And so those of you at home want you to stay with me in this. Somebody say, I am delivered. I am delivered. Yeah, I want you to follow along with me on the screen behind me for those of you that are able to see. I'm in the book of John, chapter 11. I'm picking up at verse 17. I'm going to ride all the way through verse 44. Let's see what the word of the Lord is to us in the household this morning. Verse 17 says this about Lazarus, who is now in the tomb. The Bible says, so when Jesus came, he found that he had already been in the tomb four days. Now, Bethany was near Jerusalem about two miles away and many of the Jews had joined the women around Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Uh, verse 20 says, Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him, but Mary was sitting in the house. Somebody say, I am delivered. I am. Verse 21, Now Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Verse 23, Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Watch Martha with the religious response. She says, Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Jesus asked Martha a question and said, do you believe this? Somebody say, I am delivered. I am. Verse 27 says, she said to him, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ. The Son of God who has come into the world. Look at verse 28. And when she had said these things, she went her way and secretly called Mary, her sister, saying, The teacher has come and is calling for you. I got a pause right there because nowhere in the text that Jesus called for Mary. Somebody say, I am delivered. Verse 29. As soon as she heard that, she arose quickly and came to him. And now Jesus had not yet come in the Town, but was in the place where Martha met him, and then the Jews who were with her in the house comforting her when they saw that Mary rose up quickly and went out and followed her, saying, She is going to the tomb to weep there. Verse 32, hang in here with me. Then when Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying to him, Lord, same thing her sister said, If you had been here, my brother would not have died. 33, Therefore, when Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her weeping, he groaned in 
the spirit and was troubled. Watch Jesus. And he said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Verse 35, Jesus wept. 36, then Jesus said, see how he loved him. The Jews said, see how he loved him. Verse 37, and some of them said, could not this man who opened the eyes of the blind also have kept this man from dying? Somebody say, I am delivered. Verse 38, then Jesus again groaning in himself came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone lay against him. And Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of him, was dead. And who was dead said to him, Lord, by this time there is a stench, for he has been dead for days. Tell somebody, I am delivered. Verse 40, we wind it down. Jesus said to her, did I not say to you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God. 41. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead man was lying. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. And I know that you always hear me because of the people who are standing by. I said this that they may believe that you sent me. Now when he had said these things, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he who had died out came out bound hand and foot with great clothes and his face wrapped with a cloth. And Jesus said to them, are y'all delivered yet? That says, Jesus said to him, loose him and let him go. Yes. I want you to, as best you can, practicing uh, social distance around you. Say, neighbor, if you can ever get your mind right, you your he mind will right. deliver you and it will let you go. Say it one more time. Say, neighbor, if you can ever get your mind right, he will deliver you and it will let you go. I want to talk to you this morning as we close out the series on the focus to follow Jesus. I want to talk to you this morning uh, from the subject matter of being delivered from a double mind. Uh, being delivered from a double mind. Quickly, let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you. God, that even if things die in our lives, if your word says it shall live, it shall live. God, I pray, Lord, that you would help the hearer and help us all this morning, that in this season, in the midst of this time, God, that the things that have been lost, the things that have looked like they have died, God, you would cause us uh, to put our faith, trust, and confidence in you. Deliver us, our psyche, our mentality, our understanding. Deliver us from having a double mind, yes, Lord, so that we may be able to focus on Jesus. Now, hide me, Lord, uh, in you. You so that your people only hear your voice and experience your presence. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody say, I am delivered. Somebody say, from a double mind. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Good morning and God bless you, the Good morning. I want to say good morning to even those who are watching us on the stream this morning. We've been at this series, as you all know, about focusing on Jesus. And I think that we have come to the place that all of us can agree in our times with all that's been going on around us that it is difficult for us to keep our focus on Jesus. Can you say amen? Uh, it's easy for us to get caught up in the news outlets. It's easy for us to have rabbit trails with social media feeds, which is why I, I believe it's, it's a good time for us to take time out from some of that. It's easy for us to fall into the distraction of entertainment and television that our focus, once this gets out of alignment with God, where our vision becomes blurry and it's difficult for us to find Him or to know that experience experiences that we are having, that it is him talking to us in it. But tell somebody, I am delivered from a double mind. 
But this month we have walked through the areas of deliverance, of how we can be delivered from distractions. Somebody say, I am delivered. Yes. How we can be delivered from disappointment. Somebody say, I am delivered. Yes. How we can be delivered from discouragement. Somebody say, I am delivered. Yes. However, yet today, I believe that today's area of deliverance is the most relevant in the times that we find ourselves in uh, because we can become discouraged and disappointed and due to the distractions and we really can be alright in those moments because God can encourage us and help us along the way but if we have a double mind it's difficult for God to begin to make his way to deliver us from out of what we find ourselves in because the Bible says for those that come to God must believe that he is that ain't the shout the shout is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently gently seek him. And what Satan wants all of us to do is to be wrapped up in going back and forth with a double mind to the point where we can't trust God and God can't trust us. But I got good news for us this morning. The Lord is delivering the body of Christ. I'm trying to tell you the Lord is delivering you from a double mind that this series, uh, this season that we are in is necessary for us so that we can all keep our focus on Jesus. Somebody say, I am delivered. Uh, listen, listen, listen. James 1, 6 and 8 says this. But let him ask in faith with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of sea driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. Bible says, not great, Bible says in verse 8, he is a double-minded man, watch it, and unstable in all of his ways. Bible says that the man who is unstable in all of his ways will not receive anything from the Lord. Not in my notes, but I think I can interject the book of Revelation as the Apostle John transcribed the words of the Holy Spirit concerning Jesus' word to the Laodicean church. He says to them, I wish that you were either hot or cold. He said that because you are lukewarm, I will spill you out of my mouth. God says, I wish you would either be on fire or not be on fire. Because if you're not on fire, I can then have a moment where I can begin to put some gasoline on you and allow the Holy Spirit to ignite a flame. Now I want you to run away from that. When I say that kind of metaphor, what I mean is a holy boldness that comes yes, on you yeah. to be able to live in a society of compromise. But you can't do that until we all first get delivered from a double mind. I believe that God is about tired of the back and forth. One day we up, the next day we down. One day we praise him, the next day we cussing him out. One day we say alright, the other day we are saying I don't know what's going on, I don't know what God is going to do, it's alright to say you don't know what God's going to do because you really don't, but what you got to finish that sentence with is I know he will do it come on somebody give the Lord praise right there, come on somebody type in the chat, I know he will do it but when I submit to us, this many times our prayers, hear me now, are not answered uh, because oftentimes we become plagued by a culture of double-mindedness. I believe that many times God wants to answer our prayers. God wants to cause the throne of heaven to move on our behalf. But oftentimes when we become so, so inundated with the circumstance that's going on around us, it makes it difficult for God to come through because God is truly to his word. I gotta give it to you one more time. In Hebrews, God is a rewarder of them who diligently seek him. Diligent. That means day after day. When winds blow, seek him. When stuff is crazy, seek him. When stuff don't look good, seek him. But when we don't feel good, seek him. Come on, somebody say, I am delivered from a double mind. And note what the text says. He says, when we ask of God, we must ask in faith with no doubting so that we are not tossed and driven by the winds of life. And right now, there are a lot of violent, turbulent winds, aren't there? As a matter of fact, we are walking in the midst of a season of deception, believing that there are winds of peace. Just 
because we have got a new president and a new administration in the White House, we are believing and being seduced into believing that there is peace. But what is going on right now and what is happening, there's a deception that's being put before our very eyes. And what's coming behind what we're about to see, a violent and turbulent winds. And all this little bit of a trouble that we have walked through has designed and been really orchestrated and allowed by God that we would strengthen ourselves, stable ourselves, and remind ourselves that it is about the risen Savior. That no matter who's in the White House, as long as the Holy Ghost is in my house, I'll be alright. Somebody say, I am being delivered. I need to stop in the message and tell somebody prophetically real quickly, that's why you lose, lost the money, that's why you lost the job, that's why the honey has walked out on you, because you put your faith and trust and confidence in those things, and God says, I'll have no other gods before me, that he wants to be God in your life all by himself, somebody just tell me, I am being delivered, see God is looking for a people of focus, hear me now, God is looking for a people of faithfulness, he's looking for a people of fruitfulness in the midst of this season this morning, and friends and family, our God, listen to me, is more focused now than ever about bringing his plans for your life to pass. He is focused now more than ever than moving uh, moving in the life of the believer with his plans for us individually and his plans for us corporately as the church qualified pastor. I'm so glad you asked because in Chronicles 16 and 9 the Bible says for the eyes of the Lord I feel preaching run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on those, here it is, whose hearts are loyal to him. So this morning, God is looking for those who are looking to make their election and calling sure. He is looking for those who will fix their lives upon a firm foundation because a double-minded man or woman is unstable in all of their ways. How many of y'all know flaky people like me? Are they up one minute they down the next. They never do and come through with what they say they're going to do. But this is the season where God is looking for people who are really sincere with Him. And so all of us have got moments where we've got to be delivered from double-mindedness. And if we're going to be delivered from double-mindedness in this season, here's one thing we've got to do. We've got to all be clear about the identity of Jesus. Yes. Yeah, and if we're going to get free from a culture of double-mindedness, from a culture of black backsliddenness, we've got to be clear. Somebody say, I'm clear about who Jesus is. See, see the, 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 this is the crux of the issue of our time. The crux of the issue of our time is that many of us in our culture understand who Jesus is, but many in our culture may not understand why Jesus is who he is. I'm going to say that again. We may understand, we've heard the cute Bible stories uh, for being in Sunday school as little children. We understand that Jesus is, but we may not understand why Jesus is who he is. And if you don't understand why Jesus is who he is, when a wind blows, it's easy for us to be tossed to and fro. We are in times where we want Jesus to be our miracle worker. We want Jesus to be associated, hear me now, with our cause rather than being us being associated with Jesus because. Can I say it one more time? We oftentimes want Jesus to be associated with our cause. Uh, but oftentimes, God wants us to be connected, to be in covenant with Jesus, who is the Christ, because He is God. Can I just preach it like I feel it? Uh, we got to be clear about why Jesus is who He is. Look at John one twenty nine on the screen behind me. The Lamb of God. The next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Come on, Matthew 20 and 28. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life, Jesus says, as a ransom for many. I got 
or Luke at 4, 4, 4, 4, 43, he said to them, I must preach, Jesus said, I must preach the kingdom of God to other cities also. Here it is, because for this purpose I have been sent. Check out John, 1 John 3 and 8, the apostle John says, he who sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God, Jesus, was made, I got to say it like that, I memorized it in King James, was made manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil. Jesus came to deal with the sin issue, ransom those who are lost, and then destroy the works of the devil. His preaching and teaching of the kingdom of God was to deliver people, hear it now, from the sin of their lives that brought them into bondage. And finally, he would give his life to have all of the sins of the world laid upon him, that the world and all the people in it would be free. This is why he is referred to as the Messiah. This is why he is referred to as the Christ. But all too often we come to God with petition prayers and make requests of God when we are not clear about the identity of Jesus. When I say clear about the identity of Jesus, I mean get clear about why Jesus is. Watch this now. God's response to us oftentimes when there is a delay or a denial. Put it in the chat. Sometimes God will give us a delay and a denial until we get clear about who he is, why he is, and why he sent his son to this planet for us. And when we say clear, God's response to oftentimes to us is, how does my answering this request for you keep you free, set you free, or bring glory to me in setting you free from sin? God wants to know if I answer this prayer, is the answer that I give you going to put you further into sin? Or are you going to be free and delivered from sin? Somebody say, I gotta be delivered from a double mind. Y'all ain't saying nothing this morning. Somebody say, I got to be delivered from a double mind. Because oftentimes we want God to answer our prayers for our benefit. When are we going to start to ask God, Lord, what is it that you want? What is it that you desire? God, what's on your mind? You already been so good to me. If I can just never get in alignment with you to fulfill your assignment. I got to tell somebody, glory is coming to your life like you ain't never seen before. But God's got to deliver your feet. In your mindset, tell somebody I am delivered from a double mind. Listen, listen, in this text this morning, both Mary and Martha say the same thing. They both say, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. And Jesus, I love him, Jesus doesn't even address the issue of their statement. Jesus starts talking to them about his identity. My God. Because if you ever know who he is, you can then trust him no matter what state you find yourself in. If you ever know who he is and why he is, you can believe him. The old preacher said, when you can trust him, if you can't trust him, trail him. If you can't trail him, trace him. If you can't trace him, do your best to track him because he is God. He is Elohim. Don't give me the preaching about him. He's God all by himself. Before time was, he was. When time is over, he still shall be. I'm saying, we're talking about the living God that spoke words and things came out of what he said that had not yet been insisted before. We're talking about the living God who decided to wrap himself in human flesh, live 33 years, a perfect life, die on a cross, get himself up out of the grave and ascend into hell, take back the keys to death, hell, and the grave for your benefit. You might as well understand who he is and remind the devil that God has got me covered. I feel preaching. If God has got me covered, if it looks like I'm on my way down, if it looks like, matter of fact, if I go down and it don't look like I'm coming back up, if God says I'm coming up out of this thing, I need to tell somebody, you coming up out of this. Somebody give the Lord glory right through here. See, 
see, in the text this morning, in the text, Jesus does everything he can to make sure that the people knew he had power over death and that he was the Christ. That's why he didn't address Martha and Mary on their statement of, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. He already told them uh, that this is not death, but this is for the glory of God. Watch this now, watch this. Jesus wasn't even really concerned so much about Lazarus. Jesus knew he was going to get Lazarus up out of the grave. So the issue of the text now becomes, believer, what is it that Jesus is after? What is it that Jesus is doing in the text? I submit to us this morning that Jesus is trying to deal with the mindset of Martha and Mary and Jesus is trying to deal with the mindset of all of those around him because he is trying to let them know that what you see me do with Lazarus is going to become the principal foundational point that all of Christendom will be built upon and if Jesus could get them to trust him and to believe in him at this point when he came out of the grave he knew that salvation would be available to everybody come here Romans and if the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is in you it shall quicken your mortal bodies I'm trying to keep from preaching too early in here but the all the gospel of Christianity is built on this point that if the spirit of God that brought Jesus up back from the grave if that spirit is in you what can AIDS do to you if the spirit of God that brought Jesus up back out of the grave. What can a pandemic do to you? If the Spirit of God that brought Jesus, I wish somebody would have church with me, that brought Jesus up out of the grave. If that same Spirit dwell on the inside of you, I don't care what strand is coming here. Yeah, I got the first shot and I'm going to get the second shot. And there's going to be some other stuff that's going to come out. But I believe that if the blood is covering me. I believe that if the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, when I understand his identity and my mind is fixed on him, what can the devil do to any of us? Somebody say, I am delivered from a double mind. Look here, look here, watch Jesus. He says, he says, he says to Jesus, he says to Martha, verse 25, he said to Martha, he said, listen, and the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, yet shall he live. He asked Martha, do you believe this? And Martha in this moment gets real clear, watch this, about the fact that Jesus is who he is. Martha says, I believe that you are the Christ. Nowhere in the recorded account of the Gospels is there ever any moment where Martha is present when Jesus transfigures and reveals himself to Peter, James, and John. No moment. The Bible doesn't let us know that Martha is present when Peter walks on water. Nowhere does the Bible give us any indication in the Gospels that Martha is present when Jesus puts spittle in a man's eye. But somewhere, God had revealed to Martha in her spirit that Jesus was the Christ. And until we get clear that Jesus is the Christ, it is a whole lot of Jesuses in the world. Matter of fact, in the Spanish language, in the Hispanic dialect, he's known as Jesus. But until you put the Christos on the end of it, we ain't talking about the same Jesus. I've been preaching in here this morning. Uh, we've got to get to a place where we get clear about his identity if we're going to be free from a double mind. Somebody clap their hands. Give the Lord glory right through there. Listen, watch this, watch this, watch this. If we're going to be delivered, here's number two, from a double mind, we must be able, watch this now, to ignore ignorant people. I, I know I said it. I know I said it with the with the conjugated form of uh, ebonics this morning. I know the word uh, uh, Shayla for our benefit of the young people watching me. I know the word is pronounced ignorant. Uh, 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 but 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 you've got to be delivered from ignorant or ignorant people. 
When I say ignorant folk, I'm talking about those. I'm not talking about those who are ignorant, who genuinely lack knowledge. See, the lack of knowledge is due to an exposure issue. When you haven't been exposed to something, then if you don't know, you just don't know. I, I ain't talking about them. I'm putting them to the side. That's why I gave the ebonic mother, conjugate form of the ebonics in the urban dictionary, ignorant folk. If you go really get delivered from a uh, 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 mind, you've got to be delivered from ignorant folk. I'm talking about folk uh, who, who are not genuine to the knowledge that they have been already given, uh, but still choose to act a fool when they know what the truth is. That's the folk I'm talking about. Anybody know anybody like that? Uh, uh, folk that know what the truth is, folk that understand what truth is, and folk that have walked in some truth, but truth choose to ignore like God ain't talking to them, like God not speaking to them. Watch this, because they walk their own way. The Bible calls them fools. Raymond calls them ignorant folk. Come on, somebody say, Lord, deliver me from ignorant folk. Uh, ignorant folk are people who have already watched this made a pronouncement about Mary and Martha's demise. Ignorant folk, these folk are those who have already eulogized and buried Lazarus. Might as well preach to myself while he was still sick. Lazarus is sick. Jesus has already said that this sickness is not to death. Jesus has spoken, but they are still trying to put Lazarus in the ground. These are the folk who have witnessed who Jesus is and seen that he has seen what he has done and already heard that Jesus said the sickness is not unto death. And these are the folk who keep following Jesus at a distance. They are the crowd and tend to go by what they hear uh, and what they uh, uh, have heard by way of hearsay rather than what the Lord has said. Anybody know any ignorant folk? Folk who just go by what they have heard and not by what the Lord has said. They are folk who have not discerned about the spirit what God is speaking, but they just speak what other people have spoken. I'm talking about ignorant folk. Y'all want to have church with me? Watch the text. The text with me. And the text in verse 31 says, The Jews who were with her in the house. I thought they were religious people. They were the Jews who were in the house. I thought they were church people. They were the Jews who were in the house. Those who would quote a scripture every now and then. They were in the house trying to comfort her. God, deliver us from religious people. Uh, deliver us from just church folk. And God, give us spiritual people who can discern by your spirit. Anybody want to have church with me? Somebody say, I am delivered from a double mind. Watch this, watch this, watch this. And they were comforting her when they saw Mary rise up and quickly went out and followed her saying she is going to the tomb to weep there. So she, I don't know about you, but when I read the text, the text does not suggest in any way that Mary is going to the tomb. Why do they assume that? The text doesn't say that. I talk about ignorant folk. Y'all want to have church with me? Y'all got to look straight here, trying to be politically correct inside the room. People on the camera that watch this morning go, "No, did he just say that?" Yes, he did. Somebody type it in I G N A N apostrophe T. Folk, you've got to be delivered from them because if you get their opinion, if you get their view, if you get their understanding, if you get their words in your mind and in your spirit, you'll miss God when He's trying to speak to you. You, to deliver you and to bring you into a prophetic promise that's already designed for you in your life. Somebody say, Lord, deliver me from a double mind. Watch this right here. Nowhere in the text does the text suggest like that Mary is going to the tomb. Watch this. They just assume that. And you know what the Bible says uh, when you make an assumption, don't you? I won't even go there. My mama watch it. And, and listen, if we're going to be delivered from the double mind, and Mary in the text is going to see Jesus. And, and if we're going to get free, we all have got to get to a point where we get in a crisis. We don't go to our prayer partner. Somebody say, I'm going to see Jesus. When we get in a crazy time, tell somebody, I'm not trying to hear your word. Tell somebody, I'm going to see Jesus. Right in the middle of a crisis, we've got to go and see Jesus. In the middle of confusion, we've got to go and see Jesus. In the middle of craziness, 
sickness, we got to go and see Jesus. No matter what we're facing, all of us have got to get to our place where we get on our knees and say, I'm going. Somebody say, I'm going to see Jesus. Come on, somebody say, I'm going to see Jesus. Why? Because Jesus, not only your Savior, but Jesus is Lord. Why? Jesus is not only uh, uh, my Savior, but Jesus becomes the one who fights the battles for me. Somebody say, I'm going to see Jesus. Somebody give the Lord glory and honor and praise right through here this morning. we got to get to a place in our lives where we decide that we are going to go and to see Jesus. Nowhere in the text does the text suggest that Mary is going to the tomb. Matter of fact, can I push the envelope just a little bit further right there? Mary wouldn't be at the funeral. Because the text says, the text says that Martha had to go and get Mary, who was still in the house. Watch this. Watch this. Be careful of folk who bring you news in this season. Be, be, be careful of who says what they say to you in this season. Mary is in the house. Mary is not at the funeral. Mary is in the house. And watch this. Jesus didn't call for Mary. Look at the text. Look at the text. Look at the text. Martha decides to just make that up. See, when we decide to go see Jesus and to hear from him ourselves, it helps us with this next group and to set up the next move of God. If we're going to be delivered from a double mind, we must be able to tell the difference. Here it is from the authentic and real and the inauthentic and unreal. In other words, we've got to be delivered from imposters. I'm talking about being free with a double mind, being free from a double mind. Here it is. Uh, the, the imposters, they they are the religious people who can quote the scripture. These are the folk that can do antics in church but are not real. These are the folk who understand the ritualistic. These are what here it is, are the unprocessed folk. Uh, these are the people that have not gone through the sacrifice of circumcision of the heart with God. Can I just drop this one in here? You can't get into covenant with unprocessed people. I'm going to help us this morning. You can't get in covenant with unprocessed people. What we're finding out in this season is those who are in covenant with God and those who are under a contract with God. Can I preach and talk and teach it like I feel it? I'm going to say it one more again. Somebody type it in. In this season, we are finding out those who are in covenant with God and those who are in a contract with God. See, contracts are conditional. If you do this, I'll do that. Oftentimes, our prayer life is filled with contracts. God, we try to make these vows before the Lord. And I'm not saying that we should make vows. The Bible says that you make a vow, fulfill what it is that you have said. But God is in covenant with us based on his word. Not because we are anything in and of ourselves, but because God is God and he's chosen to be in covenant with us. Now listen, watch this. I gotta give you this one. God is not promoting people in this season who have not gone through process with him. I gotta say what we'll get come is not promoting people in this season who have not gone through the process with him. What is the process, preacher? The process is when it looks like I'm not for you, are you still with me? I feel preaching in here. When it looks like I'm not going to do what I said I'm going to do, are you still with me? Or are you just with me because I can bless you? Are you just with me because you want to use the power of my name? Are you just with me because of how I blessed you last time? Or are you with me because I am who I said I am? God is looking for the people who have walked through process with him. Unprocessed people are people who are not willing to die for the principles of God, the plans of God, or the person or the persons of God through Jesus Christ. Watch the text with me. Watch the process of the text. Jesus tried his best, I'm getting out of here, to help Martha, but Martha was behaving as an imposter. 
Martha was behaving as an imposter. Now, preacher, you said on the one hand that Martha understood who Jesus was. And note what the text says. After Martha says that Jesus is the Christ, go back and look at it. Martha immediately gets up and runs and goes and gets married. Uh, because Martha didn't want to go through the process of having to deal with the death of her brother. And what she ends up doing is going to get Mary and tells Mary, the master is calling you. God was trying to put, uh, trying to put Matt Martha through a process to acknowledge who he was by her spirit and have that thing be lived out. I got to lift up my voice and tell some people there are all kinds of people in this season who are quitting the process. But I came this morning to tell you, don't you quit your process with God. Don't you give up on your process with God. God is building something in you. He's building something in your spirit. He's building something in your mind. In this next season, only the glory carriers, only the dominion water walkers who have gone through doing the impossible will be allowed And I came to make an announcement this morning to tell you, don't you get tied up with the imposters, but discern the difference between the inauthentic and the real. Discern the difference between the fake and those who have fake faith, those with fake focus, and those who are just following Jesus because of what he can do. But get to the place where you are able to follow God if nothing is happening, if nothing is going on, and I still feel ill. Somebody say, I'm being delivered from a devil mind. I got to tell somebody that this morning. I'm being delivered from a devil mind. You may ask me, preacher, what is the process? I, I, I've been in this a while. Come on, anybody here this morning? I, I, I walked through the sickness for a while. I, 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 I walked through the, 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 the unemployment for a while, preacher. What you saying? I, I've been racked with all kinds of pain in my body for a, for a while and it seems like doors are closed on every side who am I talking to on the stream this morning you keep talking to me about process preacher when is it going to be my time I can tell somebody who's asking that question it's your time when you finish the process somebody say finish the process here it is in Luke 22 and 31 on the screen behind me I'm getting out of here watch this and the Lord said to Simon this is the process Satan has asked for you you, that he may sift you as wheat. I can tell somebody that you're in the process when Satan starts asking for you. When he starts asking for the anointing on your life. When he starts asking to destroy you. When he starts being the accuser of the brethren against you to say if you all of that well then why this? That's how you know you're in the process. Watch Jesus. He says, but I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail. And when you have returned to me. Somebody say, strengthen the brethren. I gotta tell somebody that God is getting the fake faith out of your life. He's getting the fake friends out of your life. He's getting the fake followers out of your life. He's getting everything that is not real out of your life. Somebody say, I'm being delivered from a double mind. Come on, gotta land the plane. Here is one more. If we're going to be delivered from a double mind, I'm quitting. We got to be able to survive the Inquisition. Yeah, 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 yeah. If we're going to be delivered from a double mind, we've got to be able to survive the inquisition. Inquisition. If you watch the text with me carefully, the flow of the text will reveal to us the inquisition. There are moments in life when life itself and people in it will put God on trial. There are those that will say, if you really believe God, and if you're all of that in your faith, well then why this? If you really trust God, see, I think sometimes we have got it twisted. When we think that because we have, we love Jesus and have become Christ followers and Christ lovers and the Lord lives in our hearts, we think that because of that that we're not supposed to have moments of calamity, crisis, and confusion. But nothing can be further from 
the truth. Jesus said in John 16 and 33, In this life you shall have trials or trouble. But Jesus says, Fear not, I've already overcome the world. Somebody say, Finish the process. Come on, somebody say, Survive the Inquisition. I can't tell you this morning, don't answer your critics, hold your peace. Here is why. Watch the text with me. Here is how you know you're in the midst of an inquisition. Because everybody that is crying with you ain't necessarily crying for you. Right. If you will watch the text with me, I'm just preaching the text in verse 33. Look at it. The text says, Therefore, when Jesus saw their weeping and the Jews who came with her weeping, watch the text now, he groaned and was troubled. Wait a minute, wait a minute now, wait a minute, brother Mike, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Watch the text. Jesus, he knew why Mary was weeping. And it wasn't so much that Jesus was concerned himself about Lazarus. Because Jesus knew I'm here to raise Lazarus from the dead. Somebody asked the question, why, preacher? Why is Jesus crying for Mary? We think it's about the death of Lazarus. It's not, no, it ain't got nothing to do with Lazarus. Jesus is crying for Mary because of what Mary has around her and doesn't know it. Reverend, where you get that from? Where you get that from? Here is the next Jesus right here so that we can all see Jesus. Here it is. The Bible says, watch the symmetry in the flow, 35, 36, 37 of the text. The Bible begins to get clear with us that when Mary comes to Jesus, he had called for her. Martha lied on him. Uh, Mary comes to Jesus crying, Lord, I thought you told me. I thought you said to me that this was for the glory of God. Jesus then enters into another dialogue. Lord, Lord, if you had come, my brother. Begins to say, Mary, didn't I tell you that she would see the glory of God? Mary is crying, tears coming down her face. Jesus starts crying for Mary. Verse 35, Jesus wept. Y'all see it right there. Then all of a sudden, Jesus begins to, the text begins to say, and the people begin around Mary begin to say, oh, see how much he loves her. He's crying with her and for her. No, Jesus is crying because Jesus understands that any two of you will agree as touching. Nothing shall be denied to you. Jesus is trying to get Mary and Martha to believe and trying to get the crowd to have faith because Jesus understood that all of Christendom was going to be built on this principle of resurrection from the grave with resurrection life. And he is crying after he called, let Peter walk on water. After he done fed the 5,000. After he called the blind man eyes to open. Anybody here? this morning after he brought the little girl to leave the coming up from the dead after he had healed a woman with the issue of blood Jesus is crying because after I have done all of this y'all still don't believe me Jesus then says father watch the symmetry of the text he says father I know that you believe me anybody here yet this morning father I know that you have sent me anybody here yet in here Father, I know that you have put me on assignment and I've been aligned with you. Jesus says, Father, I know you hear me, but for their benefit, then there's a long pause. You know why there is a long pause? Because El Shaddai was in the building. I feel preaching now. I got to get out of here. You know why there was a long pause? Because Elohim was in the room. You know why there was a long pause? Because Jehovah Tiskanu was standing in front of him. You know why there's a long pause? Because Jehovah Shireh that would provide for them was standing at the face of the tomb. And Jesus with a loud voice said, Lazarus, come forth. You know why he had to call him by name? Because if he didn't call him by name, everybody in the tomb would have got up. Because life itself was standing there to cause death to come out and to come into life. What are you saying, preacher, this morning? Some things God does so that he can show himself strong and mighty on your behalf. But if you ever can get delivered from the Inquisition, if you ever can get delivered from the imposters, if you ever can get delivered from the ignorance, if you ever can get delivered from those who don't understand his identity. It will help you be free of a double mind and God will come through for you on your behalf. Somebody give him glory right through here. Come on somebody on the street. I wish I had a hand in here so I could shout through this. 
this comfort in here this morning. Somebody give the Lord praise right here. I'm quick. I'm getting out of here. I got to go home. Look, this is the part that gets me. This is the part that gets me. Uh, uh, Shayla, the Bible says that Jesus told them, show me where you lay <laughs> Jesus is intent on communicating that he is God. He says, D -d 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 don't show me where other people lay here. This is how I know it wasn't about Mary or even Martha that much that he was crying about. He was crying for them. And he said, y'all show me. I told y'all I was coming. Uh, I, I, I told y'all I was going to get here. Jesus said, show me where you lay here. Text says, take the stone away. I have a promise out somebody watching me on the stream this morning. You feel like your dream has died. And you buried it and you eulogized it. You put it into the ground. The Lord told me to come this morning and to tell you, take the stone away. That which you covered up that God said he was going to do in your life, take the stone away. The dream that you have for the business, take the stone away. The dream that you have of your child going to school, take the stone away. The marriage that you're looking for, take the stone away. I'm talking to somebody. The, the, the thing that you were trusted God for, take the stone away. See, taking the stone away is setting your mind free yes. from being yes. double-minded. Because you let the devil talk you into burying what God said would live. I'm trying to tell somebody, your ministry assignment, take the stone away. God's getting ready to call that thing to live. Somebody give him glory right here. Oh, God, help me in here. Listen, listen, listen. Not only that, take the stone away. Watch this. Martha says, Lord... He stinks. Certainly he stinks by now. It's been four days. You know why Jesus waited for four days? He waited for it to stink. Because for somebody, the stuff that's stinking in your life, God's going to make that smell good. <laughs> I'm going to just spin around right here. I'm quitting. I know I said I was getting out of here. But listen, listen. God's going to make the stuff that stinks in your life smells good. Here is the last shot for me. Says, no, the last shot for me is this. The Bible says, not bring up, the Bible says that Lazarus started coming forth. I'm not even going to preach about the dimensions of the tomb because that's a miracle in and of itself. But the Bible said that Lazarus came out of the tomb bound up and wrapped up. You hear what I just said? I said, the Bible said, Mike, that Lazarus came out of the tomb, God help me, or bound up and wrapped up. I'm going to say it to you all again, to the hit your spirit. Lazarus came out of the tomb. What do you do in a tomb? You put dead things into a tomb. It's buried. Lazarus came out of the tomb, bound up and wrapped up. The Lord told me to tell some of you, you don't think that you're delivered and you don't think you're free because you're still pound and you're still wrapped up. But the Lord told me the fact that you're still alive means that God has delivered you. That you're still in the soundness of your mind. God has delivered you. That you still wake up in the morning. God has delivered you. Right? So see, 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 watch this. I'm going to quit. Lord, I have to get out of here. Let me just give you this. Now we're going home. We're going home, I promise you. Listen, when they in, in that society, in that time period, in that culture, they would wrap the bodies. Uh, they would wrap them with precious oils and with different types of spices to preserve the body because it was common practice in that era and in that time, all the way back from the Egyptian era, all the way back from Abraham's time, that they believed in another life. And so they believed in the preservation for the body for another life. I gotta tell somebody, God lets you be wrapped up. God lets you be tied up. God lets you be tangled up so that he can preserve you for the next life. What you saying, preacher? He can preserve you for the next move. He can preserve you for when you come out of your tomb so that you will be alive and be a witness for him. Somebody give the Lord praise and glory right there.
Come on, stand on your feet. We got to go. Time is gone. Time is just gone. Come on, I'm going to wait on you at home to bless him and to honor him and to give him glory. I know I'm waiting all the time, but I'm going to wait for you on the stream because you have praised him yet. You've been watching me, but I'm trying to tell you this morning. Some of you are. You think that God had delivered you because you're pound. I don't know about y'all, but I praise him because I'm out of the tomb of my life experience. I praise him. I'll be wrapped up, but as long as I'm out, come on, somebody glorify him and give him honor right there. I want to talk to the people in the room, and those who are watching on the street this morning, uh, who, who are wrestling and struggling with the fact that you still got some issues, and those issues are keeping you bound. But I, the Lord told me to tell you this morning, like He said to me when I was pinning this, you're already free. I need to tell you, you're already free. You're just in the process. I wish I had more time because I would go into next week when Jesus told the people, since y'all eulogized him and since y'all wrapped him up, untangle him. And there are going to be some of y'all that God's going to cause an untangling process to happen in your life. For those that put you in the tomb, I got to quit. I got to get out of here. Look. For those of you who are watching this morning, you think that you're struggling because you're wrapped up. God told me to tell you that you're free. You gotta see it from a different perspective. You're just walking through a process toward freedom. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And God's going to set you completely and totally free. Come on, say amen if you can. Yeah. I want to pray for those of you this morning. You're watching, you're wrapped up, you're bound up, you're dealing with issues in your life. When you get clear about the identity of Jesus, those issues from your life will begin to dissipate from you. Come on, I want to pray for you who are watching this morning. If you don't know Jesus and the pardoning of your sin, you don't know him as your Lord and Savior, I want to pray for you. Come on, put that camera on me. I want to pray for them. I want to pray to that one and to this one. Come on, y'all sit with me in the room. Say, Father, I thank you that you sent your son, Jesus, to deliver me from my sin. Come on, I receive you now. Come into my heart. Change me. I thank you for forgiving me of all of my sin. I thank you for cleansing me and washing me and making me brand new. I thank you for taking me out of death's grasp and putting me into a new place with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Somebody give the Lord a hand of praise right there. Hallelujah. If you pray that this morning, I want you to go to our YouTube page. It's called Dominion on Demand. And I want you to look for four videos, Dominion on Demand. And it is four videos about new life in Christ. That's how they'll be labeled. And I will be there teaching you about what it means to be a Christian. I want you to know you're saved today. You came to the knowledge of the truth. But I want the unwrapping of the grave clothes to begin. And that begins, come on, how do you know like I know? When we know Jesus, that's the unwrapping process. Amen. Anybody like takeaways besides me? Come on, let's do these takeaways on the screen up here behind me this morning. Come on, let's do them all three. One, two, three. I am being delivered from a double mind. Come on. I will not follow ill-informed people. Go ahead. I will not follow ill-intentioned people. I will not follow ignorance. Yeah, I will not follow ignorance. I wish I had more time to unpack that because there's a lot that's just going on in our society, in our time, where uh, there's a lot of ignorant things that are happening politically, uh, economically. We're trying to live a life in our country without the knowledge of God mm. and without the knowledge of His Word and His standards for living. So how many know that I know that's just ignorant? Mm. How are you going to walk away from the one who made you? Amen, somebody? Come on, let's go to this next one. One, two, three. I am being delivered from a double mind. Go ahead. I will follow God through the process of maturity. Uh huh. I will follow God through the process of developing my memory. Yeah. I will follow God in his momentum in my life. Yeah. I will follow God through the process of developing my memory. I didn't get to that point in the message. Maybe I'll do it next week. Some of what you wrestle through is about God reminding you to remember of what he did last. And if you can remember what he did last, it will help you in the present to mature through the process. Come on, can you say amen? Is that all right? Come on, let's do the next one. Let's go. Here we go. One, two, three. In this year of 2021, 
I am godly alive. Uh -huh. I am godly a son. Amen, somebody. Come on, let's pray together. Be dismissed. Remember, Monday and Monday's meal. Tuesday, take it to the Lord. Tuesday morning, Tuesday night, dominion man and dominion woman gather. And then Wednesday night, we pick right up in our season of Lent. And we'll have a lesson for that night. Amen, somebody. Amen. Amen. Father, thank you for the gathering of the saints and believers here in the house this morning. Thank you that you minister to those who are watching on the stream. Thank you, Lord, that your presence has been strong with us in our lives. You're keeping us in the midst of this pandemic season. Thank you uh, for what you have done and what you yet shall do. So, Lord, we may leave from this place, but never from your presence. We may leave from this stream, but never from you as our Savior. We thank you in Jesus' name we pray. Somebody say amen. God bless you, the millionaires and those of you who are watching. God bless you, you are.